What's going on everyone? It's my back again. Everton have lost 2-0 to Manchester United. Look, it's a defeat that is not a... Uh, it's not like you sit there and go, oh God, we played awful. You know, we're, we're rubbish, blah, 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 blah. Um, but it is a defeat that, that shows how toothless we are. Everton probably had... But they definitely had at least a chance to score, if not two, if not three. There was pop shots, there were shots that went wide. The, this Everton team going forward and now starting to look defensively has no confidence. It's got no confidence. And it, uh, you know what? I wasn't worried about Everton um, because defensive, defensively we'd been so good and we'd been so comfortable and... I kind of felt like we hadn't worried and we didn't need to worry because our defence was so good and we'd get enough draws or, you know, we'd win the odd game 1-0. We now look devoid of confidence going forward. Um, but in the final third, we're actually fine in the middle of the park and getting into the final third, we're fine. I mean, we really tested Manchester United at times today. But defensively, we're, we're lunging in, we're making stupid decisions. The, the James Tarkovsky penalty is a joke. It's nine minutes in. He sticks out a leg when he doesn't really need to. Um, it's a poor decision by an experienced Premier League Everton captain. And he and he's, you know, he makes it 1-0. And then, you know, just before half-time again, I think it's the 40th minute, you know, Garnacho yet again, he's carrying the ball, he runs through. And Ben Godfrey, who has played enough Premier League games now, has played enough football games in his career to know that you, you don't just stick legs in. You know, it's a sound mistake. You just don't stick legs in. You you block or you shield. or you If you if the ball goes away enough, you just nick it. But instead, they're, they're putting feet in. They're literally planting feet. And it's cost two penalties today. And that... That's cost Everton a point because there was no way in hell that Manchester United were going to score from open play. Just like there was no way that Everton were going to score from open play. And it's it's cost us a point, in my opinion. I think Manchester United are poor. I think they're a poor team. Um, I think I don't think they're playing for the manager. I mean, I, I can't believe for a, a second that that's the best that they've got. I can't believe that. But... Talking about Everton, we didn't get a result in that game because of us. There was nothing Manchester United did that was brilliant. There was nothing that we did that was above average. And as a result, we didn't score. You know, we we huff and we puff and we blow nothing down. Like, we are the equivalent of the big bad wolf being a corgi. Like, it just hasn't got the... <laughs> can't do it. You know, Calvert-Lewin... He comes on in the second half, 60 minutes. We see three substitutions. Substitutions that I think needed to be made. Apart from one absolute key substitution, in my opinion. And that was replacing Ben Godfrey. Now, if he had in his mind that he was going to go three at the back at one point, then yeah, fair enough. I semi-understand it. But you do it earlier. You don't wait until the 87th minute to go three at the back when you're 2-0 down at Man United. You you do it at 60 minutes when you're making them three or four player substitutions. It was just... I just don't think he's got a clue. I don't think he's got a clue. And, you know, all game we saw Ben Godfrey get into decent positions because he's physically strong enough and he carries the ball well. But he can't cross to save his life. So you, you're seeing all of this hard work, all of this play, achieve nothing. Achieve nothing. And, you know, the corners today, James Garner on the corners again... Awful. The first four corners today were awful. Um, they either went over the top to the first defender, straight into Anana's arms. It's so poor. It's so, so poor. And yet it frustrates me so much that we just aren't capable of doing anything right in the final third. You know, uh, I'm fed up of seeing Harrison. I thought Dwight McNeil was much better today, by the way, because I'd ripped him a new one in the, in the match. Pre, uh, pre-match preview and in the match reaction I'd ripped him a new one but the facts are he did try today he tried to carry the ball he had a few shots he tried to do the the hard bit for Everton but it's not enough 
because there's not enough quality there. You know, do we miss a Dan Juma? I personally think we do, and I think he's been underutilised all season. You know, do I think that playing Ben Godfrey for 95 minutes at right back is the right thing to do? No, I don't. Defensively, today he's cost us a goal. And before that, my argument would be defensively he's all right. But he ain't going to do anything going forward. Yet the last two games, I think we've, we've conceded goals from that side and not Mikolenko's side. So it's frustrating to say the least. So I sit here as an Evertonian. We've just lost 2-0 to Manchester United, which in any other year kind of wouldn't feel like a terribly bad result because we haven't got a great record at Man United and we, we don't do very well against them. We've lost our last four, blah, 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 blah. But today it was really poor because they were also really poor. There, were, there was at least a point there for Everton today. And, and I'd, I would, I'd throw my hat in the ring and say if 15 other Premier League teams went to Manchester United today, I think they'd win or I think they'd get a point. But Everton didn't. Everton bottled it. Everton can't do it. And Everton aren't good enough. And, and that comes from the players on the pitch. It comes from the manager. It comes from the training. It's not good enough. All of the stuff going around the club doesn't help. You know, you've got Josh Wander, who's now being investigated for, you know, taking pictures of, you know, sexual images and all sorts of stuff. And it's Logan Paul's girlfriend. I mean, that's a shambles in itself. You've got the whole thing with the takeover in the Premier League, not deciding whether they're going to you know, come in or not come in. The whole club is a mess. And while it's like that, then we're not going to achieve anything as a football club. We're not going to achieve anything. This club is just existing. And I've seen so many tweets today on, on X where they're talking about how they love Everton, but they're bored of loving Everton. Or they hate the fact that every single game... It's the same shit, and it is shit week in, week out. It's just not good enough. It's like it's like Everton trying to get through a block of cheese. They haven't got it. They think that cheese is but a hot knife. They're thinking they're in. They can chop it up into pieces. And instead, they can't do nothing. Can't hack through it. Can't pick through it. They're awful. They are awful. Awful, awful, awful. I've used this analogy before, but they're a knife with the end cut off. Like they just, it just ends. It ends as soon as it gets to the front two. Uh, Jack Harrison for me. I know we talk about the right hand side, but Jack Harrison, I've said it for weeks. Uh, I've said it very early on this season. I even said it when we signed him. He's a championship. He's a championship winger. He doesn't have the composure to keep the ball long enough. And although he puts some decent balls into the box, and sometimes the amazing can happen, it's far too inconsistent. It's gone of the days where you could get away with that. You can't do it. You know, as a winger now, your job is first, go forward, and secondly, defend. He's all right coming back, defending. We saw it in the first half. He makes a, he makes a good tackle on Rashford. But apart from that, he does nothing, in my opinion. So Everton have got to look to the summer because... There's no way that Everton should be tw spending £20 million on him. They got rid of a better winger in Damari Grad. He, he was a better winger. They got rid of him. Um, it, it's, it's appalling. It's appalling. The management, the players, everything, it's appalling. But I did think there were some players that played all right today. I thought Mik Mikulenko did well. I thought Anana did all right. I actually thought James Garner, before we come off, apart from his deliveries into the box, were okay. I thought McNeil had a better game. I thought Beto for half an hour was decent. But I, I need to see more of the players like Chimiti and Dobbin now. I, ne I need to because it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense them not getting minutes over players that are not performing. I need to see Seamus Coleman. At, at right back again because Ben Godfrey isn't at right back as long as I've got a hole in my face it, it just isn't working so there are the changes that's my match reaction there will be a debrief show me and John will go into it he for the first 45 minutes was quite happy with the performance and apart from the two penalties I can see why but you can see the story there's no cutting edge there's no end. It's like reading a book to the end and not having the end. It just ends just before the end of the book. It's just like, and you lived happily ever and there's no after. There's no after. There's nothing. It just, it's just, that's it. I'm done of it. I'm done of it. So, um, yeah, look, that's the actual reaction. We were shit. We were shit. And so were they. 
but they were just a little less shit than we was. That's it. Guys, keep smiling, and uh, I'll see you soon. Peace.